Live from Silicon Valley, it's theCUBE, covering Google Cloud Next 17. Oh, welcome back to the special coverage of Google Next here in Palo Alto at Silicon Angles, the Cube Studios, covering two days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage of Google Next. 2017 happening in San Francisco. We have our reporters and analysts on the ground getting all the information. And on the phone, we have special guest Mark Hawking, who's the vice president and global team director of, of Alphabet team at Intel. He's Intel vice president. Mark, well, thanks for, for calling in. Appreciate your time. Thanks for joining us today. Yeah, happy to be here. Thank you. So Mark, obviously Intel and Alphabet have had a, had a relationship for many, many years going back. Uh, Google has been a big compute partner and, and uh, a customer. Obviously we know the scale of Google and certainly that's being featured here this week at Google Next. Really the, the coming out for Diane Green as she continues the momentum with Google Cloud. Um, but you guys have um, a relationship there. So first, before we get into some of the, the announcements and the news, what is your responsibility at Intel, and what does that mean to be the um, uh, team uh, director for Alphabet at the Intel Corporation? Yeah, so I lead a team of um, sales and engineering professionals that manage all of the uh, Intel engagements with Google and Alphabet, uh, and we work on building solutions together in many different technology and market segments, um, both in the data center and uh, across all different types of devices and applications. Um, and it's pretty pretty interesting place to be because when you bring two of the best technology companies in the world together, you can solve some pretty interesting problems for our customers. Yeah, and certainly it's been powerful. You know, Moore's Law, is, again, is in the history books, continues to, to, to be a, a factor in the growth of accelerating the technology. Google, large-scale company. Talk about the strategic alliance that you have with Google that was announced back in November. And what is it? Where is it at? What's the progress? Um, and what does it mean? What's it, what, is it, what is this alliance about? And what's the impact and benefits of that alliance between Google and Intel? Yeah, I think, um, you know, we've long had a technology and uh, a relationship with Google and been selling them, you know, various different products for many, many years. Uh, in November, back in November, we announced a strategic alliance to um, specifically targeted to accelerate the cloud adoption in the enterprise. We found that both of our companies have a shared vision of how, you know, cloud adoption is likely to evolve um, around, you know, with enterprises using both a combination of private and public clouds for different workloads and a, a desire to move workloads between those uh, and that there wasn't going to be, you know, kind of a one-size-fits-all model. We, we call it a hybrid cloud. Um, and uh, sometimes referred to as a multi-cloud as well. So we, for this alliance, we combined Google's cloud infrastructure capabilities and service with Intel's advanced hardware and software, um, really to deliver solutions that help enterprise customers grow their businesses and, you know, move things to the cloud uh, and, and move forward in in the digital economy. Um, the alliance spans uh, different technology pillars like uh, machine learning and security and the hybrid cloud that I was talking about, as well as IoT, as well, and it also encompasses uh, joint sales and marketing activities uh, where we both want to, you know, drive innovative thought leadership, marketing and selling activities to bring more businesses uh, into the future of the yeah. cloud. That's awesome, and this is a great alliance, and, and the beautiful thing about following Google, which we've been following since really the founding of the company, watching their scale just over the years from their core sets of applications and products that they have today has been astounding. You guys have been a big partner with them over the years, but now it almost seems almost easy for them. Just take the Google infrastructure, it's a huge large scale, it's global, just move it to the cloud and say you're cloud ready. That hasn't been working for the enterprises because they have unique requirements. So Google is quickly, uh, I won't say pivoting, but really tooling up to uh, accelerate their enterprise ready features. 
This is important because the, you mentioned security, there's other things going on in the enterprise around network, network transformation. What are some of the impacts of the alliance that you guys have with uh, Alphabet and Google around making uh, the, the enterprise ready cloud where it can be agile, it can be elastic, it can have that scale, which is the, the beauty of the cloud. What is this enterprise impact? What's your thoughts on uh, yeah, there, there's um, there's several things that we're doing to really drive uh, and bring benefits to our joint customers, if you will, which is ultimately enterprise enterprises around the world. Um, <clears throat> I'll give you a couple uh, examples. Um, first of all, we're really focusing on delivering innovation, um, things that technologies that enable. Uh, leadership for a customer to lead. An example of that, um, just about a week ago, uh, Google announced that they have made available the Intel Skylake processors through their Google Cloud platform. They're the first company to offer this brand new Intel technology um, to the world. Uh, and this, you know, the Intel Xeon processor, which is codenamed Skylake, supports AVX 512 instructions to more efficiently run compute intensive workloads like HPC and video processing and data analytics. So we think that this offering from them will give um, their end users an opportunity to really innovate uh, through interacting with the Google Cloud Platform. Does this help the software model scale? I mean, we're seeing a trend of moving up the stack, and what you're kind of referring to is you're bringing the Intel goodness down at the level where you guys are really making the innovation available so the, the developers can shift their value to software, top of the stack or applications or other things that are important, whether it's uh, security certification or other software. It seems to be, that seems to be the trend that the, 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 the silicon and the, and the Moore's law is now going to the cloud. Is that kind of the mental model people should think about the relationship and how you guys are, are helping them? Well, I don't think so necessarily. I think what we look at is, you know, and I think the way that enterprises look at this is, you know, different workloads may move to the cloud and some workloads you might want to have, you know, on premise in a private cloud. And we, you know, when I, when I mentioned earlier that uh, Google and Intel have a shared vision around this, while there's definitely a trend for more and more workloads to move to the cloud, um, we want to enable enterprises to be able to run the workloads wherever it fits their businesses, business needs. And so one of the other kind of, you know, pillars in the way that we're thinking about solutions is providing openness for a customer so that they can have the choice and the agility to deploy workloads uh, wherever they want to deploy them. And our, um, you know, we're, we're making some announcements this week with Google around um, Kubernetes, which is an open source um, system for automating deployment and scaling and management of containerized applications. Google built this. Uh, software tool. Uh, they've made it available in open source, and we've optimized it to run on Intel processors. So an end user, an enterprise, can use Kubernetes to manage workloads that are on-premise or in the cloud or on multiple different cloud, uh, pu uh, public cloud uh, environments. And we think that really gives them a lot of um, choice and agility, like I said. So we want the end users, the enterprises, to determine you know, how they want to operate their business, and we want to provide tools to enable them to do that uh, in any way that they, they so choose. Yeah, and that orchestration, that container trend, is really shows the value of the cloud for agility, letting the software developers just take advantage of the really amazing horsepower with the compute uh, and the storage and the network, and it's been fantastic. Mark, I really appreciate you taking the time. I just want to ask you just, you know, kind of a personal question. What's the coolest thing that you're working on now with the relationship that's being talked about here in the, in the alliance that people should know about that you think is super cool, whether it's under the hood or it's an experience or an outcome relative to some things that you're working on with, with your customers, in particular uh, Alphabet? 
Well, I find a lot of these different uh, technologies and collaborations that we have super cool, but uh, one that I haven't mentioned that I think is really high on the list is um, the TensorFlow, which is TensorFlow is an open source software library or framework for machine learning. Uh, and as you're aware, you know, uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning is starting to permeate, you know, everybody's thinking about their businesses and, and how to manage data. Um, and this is another uh, software application that Google developed that we have at Intel as part of this alliance optimized to run on Intel products. And so as uh, customers start to use um, uh, more and more machine learning, uh, TensorFlow is really the leading framework out there. Uh, it's now optimized to run on Intel platforms, and we think that's going to drive a lot of excitement and innovation for customers. We're certainly excited about it. You know, that is really a great point, and that's one of the things that we're so excited about as well, is that it's also changing the data set capabilities as as the machine learning and TensorFlow comes down and blends in with the awesomeness scale of what you guys are doing, allows for software algorithms to scale even further, which means that there's more innovation in the automation, whether it's DevOps, orchestration, or software around the analytics. It's a really kind of creates a whole nother dynamic. It's not about the data anymore, it's about the data sets uh, that are available. So it's really interesting what machine learning is doing in this marketplace, uh, great point. Um, that's awesome. Any other uh, thoughts on Google and the show uh, that's interesting that might be uh, something to share? No, we're really excited about uh, the innovations that Google's delivering via their cloud platform. We're excited to be a partner, strategic partner, um, and uh, I'm looking forward to uh, you know seeing uh, all the great things that come out of the show this week. All right, Mark Hawking, thanks for joining us on the phone here from Intel, Vice President, Global Director, Team Alphabet at Intel Corporation. Obviously, Alphabet is Google. It's the big uh, holding company doing everything from autonomous vehicles, AI, machine learning, self-driving cars, huge, huge global footprint, great cloud. Mark, thanks for taking the time. This is theCUBE, more coverage from Google Next after the short break. Oh.